All right, good morning. Um, those of you walking by want to come into the OpenMP booth. We have a short talk here. My name is Jeff Larkin. I am uh, NVIDIA's representative to OpenMP, uh, both at the uh, ARB level and at the technical level. And I'm going to talk about um, the portability of the offloading directives that are a part of OpenMP. Obviously, being in NVIDIA, I have a vested interest in uh, the target offloading directives. And, uh, but our customers, of course, want these, these directives to be portable to their architectures. Um, for many developers, they choose OpenMP because they want to develop a single source code that, and be able to run it anywhere. And of course, at NVIDIA, we have uh, a very uh, distinctive architecture that's, that's quite different from a lot of the more traditional shared memory architectures that OpenMP was designed for. And so uh, what I want to do is take a look of um, the current status of portability of the, uh, the target offload directives. And I'm going to look at that in, with two different measures. First, there's a variety of compilers available for our GPUs and how well can I take a code across those different compilers. But also, um, if I take those, those directives and I write them for the GPU, can I fall back to the host and expect good performance? So that would be portability between something like a GPU and a, a traditional GPU. So I actually compared results with six different compilers. Now, only four of them support NVIDIA GPUs right now, so I'll include four of them in the, in the initial study and then also uh, all six of them on this host uh, fallback. So, you know, the goal of this study is first to look at um, how portable we are between different compilers on the same uh, platform. And so our metric there will be, of course, uh, just the raw execution time, but also to quantify the compiler's ability to be portable back to a, a multi-core CPU. And so in other words, if I write GPU code, how well can I expect it to run on CPU as well? And so for that metric, what I've done is that I've taken what I would call a native OpenMP, which is you know traditional OMP parallel four, and compared it to um, a few different methods of writing the code for a GPU, so uh, falling, forcing that to fall back to the to the host. So this is more for record of, of the, the compiler versions I used, and so I'll go through it only quickly. Um, I will mention that um, there are newer versions of a couple of these compilers, and I, unfortunately I wasn't able to get uh, data with the newer compilers to, um, to compare against. So uh, I chose a fairly simple benchmark. It's a, a typical stencil benchmark that we've used for a lot of, uh, a lot of different codes. It does what we would call a Jacobi iteration. So basically, I'm solving for the Laplace heat equation if I have uh, this red point in the middle, and I want to figure out how much, uh, what its temperature would be in a future iteration. I would just average my neighbors, and that would kind of tell me um, what my temperature would become in the future. So. Um, what I've done is I've, I've skipped over. Oh, thank you. I've skipped over um, a lot of the initial steps of porting this code, and I'm going to jump straight to the, to a GPU-enabled code using the Teams and Distribute directives. Now, if you're not familiar with these directives, first the Teams directive is a way of generating lots of coarse-grained parallelism, uh, which is what we would expect on a GPU. So, on a uh, if you're familiar with CUDA at all, these would be the the coarse-grained thread blocks on uh, OpenMP. We would call them Teams. And so the teams directive spawns up one or more of these, these thread teams, and it begins execution on all of the master threads. Now, uh, that's not necessarily useful by itself, uh, but paired with the distribute directive, then we can begin to spread our work out across this, this parallelism. Now, I still need to use the traditional parallel and, and loop directives in order to then activate these threads within the thread teams. Uh, and I'm going to assume that people are familiar with those directives. but. Uh, the thing to remember with, with teams, this is very coarse-grained, so uh, there's no guarantee of order among the teams. There's no guarantee that any two teams, they may run concurrently, they may not, uh, and you can't synchronize between them. So that's what enables us to make very scalable parallelism, which works well on a, on a GPU. So this is the, the simple code that I used. Uh, you can see here I do a target teams distribute. So that gives me the coarse grain parallelism here. I do a parallel four that activates the threads within those, uh, those teams. Um, but it's important to note that actually uh, I'm only parallelizing uh, the outermost loop here, and that'll be significant in, in a moment. And so here you can see I've compared a whole bunch of different compilers. Uh, GCC, uh, it turns out, is a bit of an outlier, so I'm actually going to drop it off of here uh, and focus on these. So uh, the reason GCC is an outlier is it, if you do not provide a SIMD directive, the performance is terrible. 
Um, the other compilers actually do uh, more parallelization inside without that directive. So um, if I just, um, just focus on that, then you see we, we get more inline performance. The green part of the bars here is the kernel time. So this is the time actually spent and measured on the GPU. There's uh, very thin blue lines here that mark uh, the data transfer. As you can see, that, that there's, there's only nominal data transfer. And this gray is everything else. And it turns out that with the GCC compiler, there's quite a bit of extra overhead that still needs to be optimized within the compiler. And that's just because it's, it's an immature compiler. Um, something to note is that the Cray compiler did exceptionally well compared to the other compilers. And it turns out that their compiler, when they see target teams distribute parallel four, or even just target teams distribute, that is a hint to them to do their automatic parallelization. So they actually do a really nice job of automatically parallelizing both uh, loops. Uh, Clang and, and XL and, and GCC um, don't do that automatic parallelization. So you can see um, their performance is, is notably worse than Cray in this, in this situation. So I really want, though, to increase how much parallelism I'm exposing. So I mentioned I was only parallelizing that outer loop. I was both making my thread teams and my, uh, my threads, my work sharing, was done on one loop. So there's two different ways that I can get more parallelism out of this loop nest. I can collapse them together, and so that's using the collapse clause down here. So take the next two loops and fold them into one longer loop, and that gives me a lot more iterations to parallelize across, both across the thread teams and across the, the threads and even the SIMD lanes. Um, or I can split my teams distribute and my, my parallel four. So get my coarse grain parallelism on the outside and my finer grain parallelism on the inside. And I explored both of these. So here's the first one where all I did was add the collapse directive. So again, these two loops will become one and then I'll parallelize across all of those loop iterations. Now, um, this particular operation that's being done here is a stencil operation, as I said. There's a lot of locality here. So in actuality, um, I, I may kind of be blowing out some of my, my locality by doing this, but uh, you'll see here in a moment what the, what the performance does. And now you can see, um, again, GCC is a bit of an outlier here, but Clang and XL are now closer in line with what Cray did. So Cray was clearly already doing uh, some form of parallelization across both loops. And um, by collapsing them together, I've enabled the other compilers to do the same. There's still a lot of overhead here, as I said, with GCC that needs to be uh, optimized away. It turns out that they're doing some scalar copies that um, the other compilers aren't doing. So clearly they aren't necessary. And I need to work with them to, uh, to try to figure that out. So here is kind of the, uh, the, uh, the other ones. Uh, the times are actually uh, wrong there. That this is actually, I think, uh, 3.7 seconds there. So that's actually wrong. And here's what happens if I split them. So again, coarse grain on the outside, fine grain on the inside. Uh, in some cases, I used SIMD. In some cases, I didn't because the different compilers, some of them want SIMD and some of them do not. So I'm not showing the SIMD here. Um, um, as has, has been a theme, uh, the, uh, the GCC implementation, which, by the way, this is a very immature impl implementation. Uh, there's really only one guy that's been working on putting together the, uh, the OpenMP front end and the GPU back end. So this, I know, will improve a lot over time. Uh, you can see if we, we take that out to get a better idea here. Again, both Clang and Cray both do pretty well here. Um, uh, GCC with the SIMD and XL um, didn't really like this parallelization scheme. Uh, and so uh, this is, turns out to not be the best scheme for those. Now, I mentioned uh, that was a measure of how well these GPU compilers compare to each other using the same code. And uh, it seems like uh, if I take my code and if I'm able to collapse my loops, the compilers actually are, are fairly comparable in performance. So we can get pretty uh, portable code uh, doing that. Uh, I've found that aggressively collapsing tends to produce the most uh, uniform results uh, on, on a variety of apps. Now, what about if we want to fall these back to the host? So as I said, a lot of people want to write for uh, the GPU and be able to run as well on the CPU. Um, so what if I take this and I tell the compiler, uh, I add this if clause. So uh, I'm going to do a runtime uh, check to see should this run on the GPU or not. And by doing this, I have forced the compiler to build both versions of the code, both the GPU and the CPU version of the code. And then at runtime, it'll choose the right one. And notice here, I can actually just, just uh, say this if applies to the target. So teams distribute parallel four are still in play. Um, 
Now, uh, I did encounter, you know, the, as I was working with the PGI compiler, they have not yet implemented uh, this syntax within if. I had to drop that down to just a plain if. Um, so to remind you what my, my measurement here is, native OpenMP is just OMP parallel 4. It may or may not include SIMD. I picked the best for each compiler. Uh, host fallback is taking that and, and using the, uh, the use GPU flag as a false. So 100% means we have, uh, they're performing equally well. If I say 50%, that means that the host fallback takes twice as long as the native. And here is uh, the six compilers I tried. Uh, Klein did fairly well. So uh, the, unfortunately, the collapse doesn't build and run. It actually, uh, I believe, if I, uh, if I recall correctly, it crashes, but does build. So I had to leave a blank here, and the same with the XL. So I'm working with IBM to, to figure that out, and it may already be fixed in a newer compiler. They are able to get about 80% of the, uh, the full performance. Cray does quite poorly. And the reason for that is when Cray sees a, uh, a target team's distribute, parallel four, uh, what they do is they actually fix it at one thread within each thread team, and then they use SIMD parallelism on the GPU. So th that obviously does not translate well to the CPU because they're only using one thread on one core, and they're getting the SIMD parallelization there. So uh, they're aware of this. They just have no, haven't had any motivation to really um, to change that uh, given the targets that they support. Uh, GCC... Um, again, does quite poorly. I think they're similarly running uh, sequentially and not vectorizing, which would account for the performance difference here. Excel uh, does quite well. You can see anywhere from 80 to, I think this was somewhere, somewhere upwards of 95%. So actually does quite well um, compared to the, uh, the native code. So Intel and PGI, neither of these actually support NVIDIA GPUs, but I could actually do the same experiment since I can build for a, a, a multi-core uh, target. And you can see that even just doing the Teams Distribute Parallel 4, the Intel compiler does uh, quite good, um, and, the, and the collapse does uh, nearly as uh, well. I believe this was actually uh, like 101%. So it was so close that it was in the noise that it was actually slightly faster. Um, you can see that the split where I have the Teams on the outside and the Parallel 4 on the inside, it didn't do as well. And I'd say uh, that's just because they're now sequentializing on the outside, paralyzing on the inside, and they're probably not getting particularly good cache reuse uh, in that sense. And the PGI compiler, uh, you can see, does very well with the team's distribute and with the collapse and not as well with the split. And so uh, similarly, very close to 100%. And this is using 17, uh, 17 10. Uh, so what are my takeaways? So I asked two questions at the beginning of this. Will my target code be portable between compilers? And it actually, uh, for the most part, did fairly well. The aggressively collapsed code did particularly well. Um, but still, um, depending on the maturity, you may get um, different results. And I would say that the, the requirement of writing OMP SIMD, some of the compilers demand it, some of the compilers don't want it, and that's a little bit inconsistent at this point. And hopefully that'll get cleared up. Can the target code be portable to the host? And this is really compiler dependent. So uh, Intel, Excel, and I should have updated this with the, the latest data and PGI, all three of them do quite well on this. Um, Clang does okay. It hits about 80%, and for a lot of users, that's close enough. And then GCC and Cray did poorly. So um, for future work, I'd really want to uh, revisit this as, as the compilers become more mature, and I expect that a lot of these results will uh, change. So with that, thank you for uh, coming out. Are there any uh, questions for me? Yeah. So I, I don't recall. So the question was, if, if you leave SIMD there, uh, what happens? And it's, in most of the compilers, they either respect SIMD or they ignore SIMD. Um, I did encounter one case, and I don't remember which compiler it was, that it just balked. It did not want SIMD there at all. Um, so unfortunately, what I ended up having to do is, is introduce an if def, and um, I, I built in. You know, if def uh, GCC, turn on SIMD, uh, otherwise turn it off. And, um, but for the most part, if you have it there, uh, most of the compilers will, will in the least ignore it and, and in many cases respect it. So, yeah. All right. Thank you for coming out.